A child's death that has haunted the town of Pekin for the past year. On November 18th, 13-year-old Robert B. was reported as a runaway by his mother. However, we have been in touch with the Illinois State Police and are in the process of entering information of a missing or endangered person advisory. And what happened to Robert B. brought people in Pekin out to search for answers themselves weekend after weekend. Thousands of leads poured into the Pekin Police Department. The search for the teenager coming to a halt on a hot July day when his skeletal remains were found. Hi everybody, this is Teresa on a real note. I don't know how to even describe it. Especially as much as I love kids. I mean, come on, anybody knows me, I know I would never, ever hurt a child. I don't even believe it's making them. <sighs> but anyways, I want to thank Kendra for something because she got my brain thinking deep. Why would she lie like that? There's gotta be a motive for everything, right? she knows too much. She's been in and out of every dope house there is. People are scared. Kendra, I hope you're fucking listening to this bitch. I think it's really important that I sit down with each and every person and talk to them face to face for one reason to kind of see how their stories match from when I talk to them on the phone but then also a face to face interview I feel like you can gather a lot of information from that so one of the people I'd really wanted to sit down with was Kira I had spoken to her on the phone and had showed part of that interview in an earlier episode but I really wanted to kind of sit down and talk to her and find out how she was within that house and how she knew the people and if there was any information that we could gather from her knowledge of the people who were there around that time. Well, thanks for sitting down. I know this has got to be a lot. <laughs> when you first started hearing this theory come out, what was your initial reaction to it? I don't know, I was just kind of shocked. I didn't... Did you feel like it might have rang any truth from the people that were mentioned in the show? Or you were kind of like, I have no idea? No, I mean, I've known most of these people, like Josh I've known. I didn't know Kendra at the time, really. So I was really surprised that I could know these people. I, I would have never thought they could do anything like that. Yeah. So it was just a shocker. Yeah, did you, would you say that you were friends with Josh McCreary at the yeah. time you were friends with him. Are you still friends with him? Um, I haven't seen him since Springfield. Oh, okay. Did he hang out at the 1400 Hellman a lot? Yeah. Okay. Within the house, do you remember where you were staying within that house? I mainly lived in the back. If you go through the house, there's like a back porch. Okay, yeah. That's where I stayed at back there. Oh, okay. Um, except towards the end, before I went to Tennessee, I was downstairs in the basement with my ex-boyfriend for about two weeks okay. before I left. And did you notice night when Jerry would leave to go to work? Did, did you notice partying that would happen at the house or what was your impression there? He was usually there when there was partying going on. I don't hang around with a lot of people. But I mean, I would let a couple of people come over, but usually he was there for all the partying. Oh, okay. If not, Nobody was there. So oh, okay. It, so yeah, he was usually... It wasn't okay. like how everybody's made it seem. But. Yeah. The house itself, been described correctly, is kind of like a transient type drug house? Um, or what was your impression? It's not like people would think um, a trap house is. Okay. Okay. Uh, people didn't come there and do drugs and like that. I, you know, it was Jerry, me wanting to get high. We'd have a couple of friends come over and get high. They'd leave. I mean, it wasn't... It was just like any normal house if people wanted to hang out. Do you remember how, about how long you were staying there for? It, it was on and off. I don't, I don't know okay. for sure that's dates. Okay. No, that's fine. Close to a year, two years. Oh, okay. So you were there for a, like, a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Had you ever seen Bonsai at all? Did you ever know, or know that you saw him, I should say, because obviously people walk around everywhere here, but like, did you ever know that you saw Bonsai? One time. One oh. time um, I was having an issue and I had a friend meet me at the park right down the street okay. and um, him and his mom was there. Did you know pretty soon when Bonsai went missing just through the news and people talking or did you not even really know it had ha that he went I missing? I 
didn't really watch much TV, and I don't, hang, like I said, I don't hang out with many people, so I, I didn't know. I actually, the way I found out was I was at a gas station, and I saw the picture of him and all that. That's how I found out. And so when you found out, you never had any suspicions that something might have gone on in that house? No. 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 Did you ever hear any talk, even if it was like cryptic, about somebody killing someone or anything that seemed out of place like that? Nothing. The only thing, um, Teresa, I don't know if this is true or not, she claims she's psychic. She just mentioned that she could probably find him and she has a feeling of where he might be. I don't know. It wasn't. She didn't say specific. She didn't say anything like that. But this was later, later. Oh, okay. Yeah, this isn't when it when I first found out. So right, and so that was obviously before they found the body. She was kind of talking about yeah. her psychic abilities and how she might mm -hmm. have some feelings. Be able about to help that. them or something okay. like that. Did you take that as kind of genuine or kind of crazy, or you just kind of were like, okay? I mean, I do believe in that kind of stuff, but <laughs> I don't. I don't believe she was. Yeah. I don't want to sound mean, but I don't think she was. <laughs> yeah. It kind of, well, it kind of seems weird, especially because the finger's being pointed at her Plus now. Plus, with the, um, you know, the whole drug thing, people act really, like, out there a mm -hmm. lot, so. So yeah. you didn't think too much of it. Right. I know you said you didn't, like, know Kendra really well at that time. Oh, I didn't know her at all. I just all. actually met her um, not that long ago when I came back from Tennessee. Okay. Did you never even saw her, that, as far as you know, come over to the 1400 Holland right. House? Right, yeah, never. I think one thing we're kind of seeing here is the blame sort of being pushed on to Kendra a little bit, but that is only really coming from Teresa Vansill. And sometimes when I hear Teresa talking, I almost feel like Teresa's talking about herself, but replacing her with Kendra. And the reason I'm kind of feeling this pretty strongly is, first of all, Kendra was the first one to come forward. She could have just not come forward. And then she also didn't even seem to be living in that house at the time. And the people who lived in the house at that time are not really familiar with her. If you see through my interview with Kira, she doesn't even really seem to have known who Kendra was at the time. And then Jerry has even mentioned that he didn't even seem to start to get to know her in late 2017. So we kind of have these two people who are affiliated with the house, who live in the house, but that they don't even really seem to know Kendra. So it does seem like Kendra kind of came along later, and I think that's one thing we really need to keep in mind. And what about Teresa? What would you say your relationship with, was her back, with her back then? Me and her used to be really good friends. Yeah. Yeah, actually, she was one of the first girls I met and hung out with, and I really liked her. And was she at that house quite often, or mm -hmm. okay. did yeah. she ever like sleep there? She just kind of came by to hang out? Um, well, we didn't sleep much. She was up and about, but yeah, she was there overnight a lot. Okay. So. What about Nick Phillips? Was he someone who was staying at the house or around the house at the time that you know of? I might have seen him. I don't know what he looks like. Okay. I'd have to see a picture, but the name doesn't sound familiar. Okay. Uh, what about Randy Seidel? Is that a familiar name? Never heard of his name. Okay. So you don't know of anyone by that name right. that you recall ever being in that house? Right. But I mean, Jerry did bring over a lot of people and then... So I don't. So there's also a chance that yeah, you might just I not have known every person who came in and out. I obviously. stayed in my room a lot, and like, they, they did a lot of meth. I'm more of a heroin addict, so I was more, not really, you know, with them. Yeah, <laughs> kind of isolated a little more by yourself. Did you ever, around the time that Bonsai went missing, notice any like weird smells or anything like that coming from the house at all? No. Um, when I heard that supposedly he was kept down there, it was kind of weird because, I mean, if this had happened at the same time I was there, I didn't, I would have smelled something. Did you notice any sort of like freezer or refrigerator or anything like that down in the basement? Yeah. Yeah, towards the back there was a refrigerator. I actually used to go in there and look for stash spots all the time. So that was actually something common you would look in the fridge yeah. too okay were josh and tara dating at that time do you know um, or on and I, off or? on and off yeah okay yeah 
So I just want to quickly remind everybody to subscribe. Please understand the money just goes right back into trying to solve these cases. So it's, it goes towards a good cause. And then also you get to see the episodes early depending on what tier level, three days or seven days early. You get discounts on merchandise. I set up a private Facebook group that's only meant for subscribers. There I do Q&A sessions, which I'm going to do once a month for subscribers so they can ask questions about the series that are going on. And then also you get to see uncut interview footage and behind the scenes footage. So I post that about every other week. I post something new from behind the scenes. So there are definitely some cool perks you get if you subscribe. And it definitely just goes into helping solve these cases. So if you have the ability, that's awesome. And if not, you can always, of course, watch the show for free on YouTube uh, uh, when it's released to the public. Back to the show. You had mentioned that you had heard from Jerry more information. Do you mind talking about what he had told you? Yeah, um, I talked to Jerry and he pretty much told me everything that happened because I was kind of upset that he never, he, he tells me a lot of stuff. He, he would not mention this to me or anything. Um, he told me, so you want me to tell you like pretty much everything that he told me? Yeah, if you don't mind, okay, if you're yeah. comfortable saying that, yeah. Um, what he had said was three people had already told him, admitted to him, what was going on. Kendra had come and mentioned what supposedly happened was they brought him over, got him high. I guess he was being annoying and so she pushed him and he fell down the stairs or fell something to that nature. Um, and then Josh had jumped on him and started strangling him. They just kind of kept him down there he said Teresa, recently Teresa had been staying there too as well. Kendra's with him, staying with him now. Teresa was staying with him a couple weeks before. Okay. Um, and I guess he said that she was fishing around for information about exactly what he knew, but she also told me that um, not long before the body was found that she had said where the body was. Yeah. So, and then they found him, but it, he said it was exactly where she said it was. Did you know Jonathan Tandy at the time? <laughs> yeah, we had some running ins. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some, ne I'm assuming negative run ins. Yeah, I mean, we kind of I don't know, made up like we were not friends after that, but we were all right. What kind of run ins? Jerry owed some money to him, and so one day he came at me with some. I don't know if it was a hatchet or what it was. It was something. I ended up pushing him to get him away from me, and then pretty much the whole block jumped me. Because <laughs> it's, it's, they're really close, kind of like a whole, his family lives there, and on that block, his other family, and I don't know, it was just, I was a not new person, but I was the bad one I admitted to using. So I was, I don't know, I was just not really welcome there. Did you ever see or notice Jonathan Tandy hanging around at the house? Yeah. Did Jerry ever talk about, if this story is accurate, if Bonsai had been given any drugs? From what I remember was they brought him there to get him high, was what I heard. Okay. I don't, but then they said he was being annoying, so I, I don't know. I. From what he said, they just brought him there and got him high. Okay. Did Jerry mention if Jonathan Tandy was part of bringing him there to get him high, or did he not? He did mention that. Okay. Right. I know he Jonathan, was... like I said, usually supplied a lot of the stuff. One of the things I think is so important here is building a pattern of behavior. And I think it's pretty obvious at this point that Jonathan Tandy was somehow involved in drugs and selling drugs. And it's very interesting how Kira is just like, yeah, that's that's who supplied the drugs often. And then on Teresa's side, we have an adult peer pressuring minors to do drugs and other people to do drugs. So I kind of feel like that pattern of behavior is really important when we look at what might've happened to Bonsai. I know what happened. I've thought about it all hardcore. I want to thank you. Because you're the one who solved this case by lying your lying mouth on ashes to ashes. That's not what this is about. It's about Robert. I'm laying in the bathtub and I start dreaming. All of a sudden, I'm laying on Jerry Birch's basement floor. 
I'm like a rug. I see Robert standing there and he's just dancing around. Being autistic. Jonathan reaches over and hands him a header. Because he wants it. Robert smokes it, trying to be cool like the big boys. Well, he loses it. Josh is sitting there and he's all spiced out. You need to shut your friend up. Kendra's sitting over there shooting up like usual. Everybody's got to be cool, right? Josh don't like repetitive noise. John realizes he's fucked up here. Robert is out of control. He's sweating. He's starting to feel sick. He's scared. He wants to go home. Jonathan's trying to tell him, no, man, just sit down. You're going to be all right. Oh. All of a sudden, Robert just drops. Jonathan's, oh, my God, dude. What's wrong with him? Is he having a seizure or something? Robert's throwing up. John is over top of Robert. He doesn't know what to do. He's starting to gurgle in his own vomit. Josh comes out of his stupor of spice. Hey, man, he's dying. I need to get help. Oh, no, no, no. Get him up. Get him out of here. Kenner's like, get him out. Well, Robert's shitting himself. Kendra's like, he's dead, dude. People shit themselves when they die. What are we going to do? We're all going to go to jail. You got to get him out of here. Everyone's in a panic. Josh gets up. Hey, man, he's faking it. He gets over top of Robert. He grabs him by his throat. Motherfucker, quit. Dude, knock it off. Straighten the fuck up. He's slapping him. John's like, no, he's not. I need to get him help, man. He jerks Robert up by his throat, and he's angry. Quit fucking with me, dude. Wake up. He's slapping him, thinking the kid's going to come out of it, right? No, Robert turns blue. Josh is freaking out. Well, guess what? Josh cr crushes his larynx, not on purpose, but in goddamn fear. Kendra's like, get him over here in the freezer. We'll figure out later on what to do. Let's get the fuck out of here. We didn't do it, you guys, right? They're all scared. Josh don't go back to the house for a long time. Kendra doesn't either. Jonathan doesn't go in there either. I do, though. And one night I'm sitting in Jerry Birch's living room. Tara's sitting there. The lights are out. Jerry's at work. It's peaceful for once. We clean the living room up. We're not on dope. We're coming down. But it was nice. The silence was nice. And I asked Tara, I said, hey, can you help me out? She said, doing what? I said, well, get on your cell phone and go into Robert B. Jr.'s missing page and look at some of the comments. Just, just scroll through that. She said, I don't want to hear about that stuff, dude. I'm like, well, you know, it would help out. Just could you just look for something? She said, what? I said, anything odd that maybe someone is going to say that doesn't make sense to a missing page. Like, serial killers... They think they're smarter than the police, Tara. And I feel like the serial killer thinks he's got away with something. And he's going to say something arrogant just to prove that he's smarter than the cops and, and be right underneath their nose in case he ever is gone. Like, hey, man, I said that. You guys didn't see it. She's like, all right. All oh, the while, the killer's in the basement. I'll get to that later. I said, Tara, a lot of weird shit happens to me, but I just know that I can figure out who killed this child. I can. I, I have a gift. And, and it's driving me crazy. I, I'm not going to be able to stop till I figure it out. She's like, all right, well, she's, uh, I've seen enough, man. That's freaking me out. She gets back to her cell phone. You remember this, Tara? I ask that you tell the truth about this, Tara. And the truth sets people free. Because if you lie for him, he's going to go to hell. So are you. And that little girl of yours is going to be pointed at. And picked on and bullied for the rest of her life. Because her mother and father both lied about a child's murder. And she'll end up just like Josh. It isn't even, isn't even Josh's fault for the way he is. He can't handle screaming or repetitive noise. It drives him completely insane. He snaps out and he's gone. That's why he grabbed Jerry Birch's dog like that. He was not in there. His eyes were pure black. 
he's really bad uh, junkie and th- and steals a lot and he has a violent temper. I see him strangling Jerry Birch's dog one day. Jerry was at home and he grabbed Jerry's dog up by his throat just because his Patty was barking and grabbed Patty up by her throat and was holding her in the air, strangling her to where she was quiet. And I went over to him calmly and I said, Josh, let go, let go of Patty now. Listen, I go, you're gonna, you're gonna upset Jerry. You know how much Jerry loves Patty. I go, just, just let her go. You know, you're, you're hurting her right now. And he, he had this look on his face like he was locked into what he was doing. It was like he had snapped over the dog barking, over Patty barking. And he never did like Patty, and Patty never did like uh, Josh. Josh didn't know what the fuck he was doing. That's what made it an accident. Josh wants to die every day for it. You didn't see me for a while, and that's the first time I ever seen a tear in your eye. It's the first time I actually liked you. What the fuck's this loser doing down here? Oh my God, he's crying. <laughs> wow. Remember me come over to you, Josh, and I knelt down to you. Like, Josh, what's wrong, man? I ain't never seen you cry. Did somebody die or something? No. Leave me alone, Teresa. Get the fuck away from me. I swear to off the arm. No, Josh, just talk to me. Okay? It's all right to cry, man. I cry all the time. Is it Tara? No. You lied. It was Tara. You told her. And she wanted you to get the fuck away from her. That's when those pretty eyes of hers looked at you like an animal. Why didn't you just call an ambulance? Tara would never be able to keep it secret like that. But for her own sanity, she had to get the fuck away from you that day. And you're crying in the basement thinking the love of your life just drove off with some fucking pervert. And she thinks you're just a fucking coward-ass bitch. You want a child to die. Show him in the fucking freezer and left him. You know, you were straightening up. You were getting off dope at that time, Josh. And Tara was getting better. Till that day. And I looked at you, Josh, and I said, Whatever you did, Josh, the Lord wants you to forgive yourself, okay? And that's when you looked at me, Josh. Straight in the eyes for the first time. I didn't look at you like a fucking... Dog strangling, fucking ornery ass, even little bitch. I said, just forgive yourself for whatever it is. But just don't ever do it again. And don't give up on Tara. Get her away from that fucking pervert. Well, she just left with him right now. She won't fucking listen to me, and I really love her. I said, well, don't give up on her, Josh. And look at you both now. Even keeping this horrible secret. You would have fucking ended up in a drug coma and dead, Josh, if it wasn't for Tara. In a way, you guys saved each other's lives. This nasty secret isn't so nasty. It was an accident. Just tell the truth, bud. It will set you free. Robert is already free. He's with his daddy, and they're no longer suffering. It's the ones that wonder what happened to Robert that are still suffering. Even his mom. She's learned empathy since then. That woman has changed. Yeah, Lisa, forgive yourself. You're just ignorant, okay? But forgive yourself. Learn from it. Talk to other mothers that are on drugs. And tell them what happened. That child you let play by himself so much. That child that was left all alone. Just wanted to be a part of a brotherhood. That's why he started running the streets so much. That's why Pekin welcomed him into homes. I'm sure a lot of people have cried over Robert. But I'll bet you I've cried over him more than his own mother. Josh, you're not evil, bud. You just need some serious counseling. And if you go to prison for telling the truth, you'll do it with honor. You go now. But you can't because of that baby girl of yours. Look at your little girl and think somebody took her. She is. And then when you find out about her, she's just bones. Tara? You should be no, no blame for Tara. Everybody, Tara has known. And it's drove her fucking crazy. But she can't bring Robert back. She's off drugs now. She's got a beautiful child. Robert's mom was a piece of shit. I mean, come on. Tara didn't do that and she wouldn't hurt a baby. And she loved Josh more than she loved herself. That boy was scared of you. You know, Josh, she wasn't scared of nothing. 
Well, you guys were a lost cause before you got together. And I seen a change in you. And I started seeing a major change in Tara. He was back to Jerry's house. <laughs> Kendra, but I'll be ready for you. I'll open the bar door and let you kill my ass. <laughs> Cause you're the reason he's dead. Your coward ass ways is the reason he's dead. He was still alive in that refrigerator, bitch. <laughs>